Hello everyone, today we're studying the principle of the Ecclesia part 2 and I trust that you have enjoyed last week's broadcast learning about the Ecclesia, a governing people. We must understand that the concept of governance comes from heaven itself, amen. God is the most um, <clears throat> important, the chief governor, if we can put it this way, of heaven and of earth. And so heaven has a government just as the natural world has a government and the natural world put together a government in society by electing governors within that government. Amen. And that's where the role of politics is so important in a society. But if the governing officials in society today were able to do their work, were able to bring reformation and transformation to society, why would we need the kingdom of God? Why would we need heaven's government to um, come from earth, to manifest within the earth realm, within the natural government um, that we find ourselves? Why would we need this government to come and take control if everything on earth was working as it should be? Well, we have governors on earth that do not represent the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of darkness. And these kind of governors do not represent righteousness. They do not represent truth. In fact, they are building their own kingdoms. They are not civil servants. They are there on their own agenda. And so today, we want to ask the Holy Spirit to give us revelation of the ecclesia, which are governing people, and their mandate is to bring heaven's government to earth. Now, if it was that easy, Jesus would never have chosen the location of Caesarea, a very, very difficult location to build his church, to release government, or to release governing mantles, mantles for government upon his disciples. And so <clears throat> we understand from last week's um, broadcast that the difference between Jesus' government and Herod's government was that it operated in two realms. And we see that it was Jesus' government was released to bring um, righteousness and truth, to bring justice to earth. Heaven's government, Herod's government, a very, very evil governing force, um, an ecclesia that met at the gates to deliberate policy for um, Judea, Samaria, and, and the whole of the Roman world, um, but yet it wasn't life-giving. It wasn't able to bring reconciliation. It wasn't able to give hope to people. It wasn't able to set a new order and um, that would set people free. In fact, Herod's government enslaved, and, and there were very few personal freedoms with heaven, Herod's government. I keep saying heaven's government. It's actually Herod's government. So the principle then of the Ecclesia is that of legislation, that God has um, ordained, he's mandated his Ecclesia to legislate that which is in the heavenly realms, that which is of the kingdom of heaven, <clears throat> the kingdom of God to manifest in the earthly realm, as we've said, and that manifestation must bring freedom. That manifestation must bring liberty. Amen. Where Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to liberate. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to set free. Jesus could only liberate and set free through 12 disciples at that time. But then he was uh, obviously taken up to heaven. The disciples were left and the early church was birthed. And so the mandate of the early church is to disciple men and women. The mandate of the early church was to build nations. The mandate of this, the, the present day church is to legislate, to um, um, disciple nations. The mandate of um, today's church is to build the kingdom of God and to legislate the principles and the um, profound truths of the kingdom of God here on earth within the kingdom of darkness. Amen. And so today's church is not just called to be a happy, clappy group of people, but today's church has been liberated, been set free, been mandated to bring transformation and reformation within society. And how will that take 
place. It'll take place through the ecclesia. And you and I understanding our um, job, you and I understanding our function within um, that group of people um, that have been legislated by heaven, mandated by heaven called the Ecclesia. So <clears throat> I'm encouraging you today to really understand and to um, know your part in the Ecclesia, to understand your function, to be able to live out and demonstrate the kingdom of God wherever you are in society, whatever um, role you might play in society. Not everyone is called to politics, but um, some are called to media, some are called to education. And so what would the Ecclesia look like in education? So those then that are called to the field of education, to the gates of education, would lobby against policies that are liberal, policies that advocate sin, policies that advocate transgenderism, policies that ad advocate um, taking the name of Jesus out of the school system, which we find in many, many nations today. They would advocate for righteousness and truth. They would advocate for um, uh, school governing bodies to govern themselves instead of, of um, school governing bodies being nationalized. And so instead of nationalization, it would get down to the principles of localization. And school bodies would rule and would lead local communities, local schools. Um, educators would be able to educate their, their students without having this um, bond and without having this oppressive, oppressive regime um, uh, upon them um, from national government telling them what to do. And so this is why we need men and women that God has raised up with authority, kingdom authority, to stand in these gates and to decree, to begin to prophesy, to function within the gates of education, to stand against these policies. Amen. And so as the church and as educators begin to join together, we have two forces. We have the forces of the kingdom of God and um, being released through those that are called to pray, those that are called to prophesy, those that are called to decree over the, these gates. And then we have those that are standing in the actual gates of education, those that are educators that will begin to deliberate these policies. Policies, amen. Those that are within government deliberating these policies and setting um, the national dialogue in terms of liberation for students, setting them free, amen, bringing um, a new order of governance within the gates of education. So if it was so easy, Jesus would never have taken his disciples to the most evil place. And we find in Matthew 16, verses 16, uh, 14, 15 to verses 18, we want to look at the location of this particular um, passage here. And Jesus says, um, it says here in verse 13, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, that was one of the most northern regions within um, Judah at that time, he asks his disciples, who do you say the son of man is? They reply, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah. Jesus was wanting to elicit a response from his disciples because he wanted to see and he knew within himself, but it needed uh, for them to state that he is the son of God. It needed for them to understand, were they ready to step into this mandate and be legislated as the ecclesia, whether were they ready to take on this um, particular governing authority and um, these principles of governance, this authority that was given to them to be able to witness kingdom governance in the natural. So uh, Jesus says in, in um, verse 15, but what about you? And he asks, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answers, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Amen. And so 
some had um, equated Jesus with, um, um, obviously, uh, Jeremiah. Some had equated him with Elijah, looking at his prophetic anointing and his prophetic function as the Son of God. But Jesus knew that, but Peter knew that Jesus was mandated and that was sent by God himself and says to him, you are the Son of the living God. Verse 16, Jesus answers him and says, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Amen. But by my Father who is in heaven. So he's saying to Peter here, flesh and blood hasn't revealed to you the fact that you are called to be the ecclesia. Son, um, uh, uh, Peter, flesh and blood is not revealed to you, but by my Father which is in heaven, exactly who I am as Son of God and what I've been mandated to do within this region as I walk the streets of Jerusalem, as I walk around Caesarea, as I go down to the south of Israel, wherever Jesus would walk from um, Jerusalem down to uh, Jericho. Remember, he meets um, these uh, various men on the road to Jericho. And so Jesus would have to step in um, with his mandate, whether it was to heal, whether it was to bring deliverance. But here we find a setting where Jesus is operating within his governmental mandate. Amen. And this is within um, Herod's government and he's demonstrating to him today, uh, Peter and to the disciples, that there's a different government that must um, be legislated from heaven and you as the disciples must know that this is revealed to you not by men not by works alone but by um, the son of god amen and by heaven himself all right so um let's have a look then at the location of this verse we see that um caesarea is in philippi it's a roman town now, interesting enough about Caesarea is that it's um, the center of occult worship, all right? The temple of Augustus, Caesar is built there, the temple of the goddess Pan, and um, the physical gates of Hades, all right? Caesarea being the place of the gates of Hades. Yes, there were gates probably um, at Caesarea because the ecclesia would debate at the gates. But these gates were not only physical, they were spiritual gates because spiritual gates rule the territory. Spiritual gates open and close. They allow the kingdom of darkness or they um, facilitate the kingdom of God to rule in an area. So Jesus is here at Caesarea. He's at a physical location. Yes, He's at a cave, and at this cave, animal and human sacrifices would be made. Now, this is not uncommon to various places in the world today, particularly in Africa, where we are found, where human and animal sacrifice, sacrifices are made. And the purpose of these sacrifices is to elicit and to draw down um, uncommon power power which is from the kingdom of darkness to operate um, on a very basic level within those gates. So for example, if you're from the gate of education, many leaders, okay, they would draw on these powers, they would offer sacrifice for their learners, they would offer sacrifice for their jobs, they would offer sacrifice um, for their employers, they would offer sacrifice to these gods. Uh, why? Because they needed the blessing of these gods. They need the blessing of these powers. They need to be infused with greater power. So this is a completely anti-God principle. It's an anti-God practice. In fact, it's a pagan practice. It, it emanates from the Roman world. And, and, and it's still practiced in many, many 
countries today. Blood sacrifice is rife. Yes, it's given a different name um, uh, within the context of religion. Um, for example, New Age practices, we um, see African witchcraft, different kinds of witchcraft would offer sacrifices at these gates. Now, Jesus chooses this place, Caesarea, okay, which is a very, very evil place. Now, Caesarea represented um, the government of Caesar. We find the goddess Pan, which um, many of, of the Romans were offering blood sacrifice and idolatry to this goddess Pan. We find the devil in person was represented there and, and, and um, often manifest in Caesarea. Um, we find the gates of hell, which is, is Jesus says, the gates of hell, the practices, the entrances, the that which facilitates, okay, the opening and the closing of these demonic practices, the, this demonic worship, these principalities and powers that um, Herod are, is receiving from. Remember Herod, um, because of his evil uh, um, intentions and because of demonic control and, and the whole principle of, of um, the ecclesia and legislation, he would receive advice from demonic um, principalities. He would receive advice from his advisors who would um, open the gates, in a sense, to this world of demonic control, this world of demonic oppression, amen, and this world of pagan practices. And so um, let's say then that um, uh, the gates of hell are the places, all right, where demonic control and where demonic practices where the voice of the demonic principalities over regions they have the legal right to operate within a region why because the gates of hell are active there why because the ecclesia remember the ecclesia in the natural gave and um, those gates of hell gave them um the freedom to operate those principalities and those powers. And so the, the ecclesia and the natural, Herod's ecclesia, would receive advice, would receive strategy from these principalities and these powers, amen, for the ruling of their government within the territories at that time. So um, let's have a look at Jesus' ecclesia that he came to set up, that he came to place in order. Well, basically, this is us as a people. We are operating in this realm today, and many of us um, are starting to operate within it. We understand our legislative and governmental authority. It always starts with the church because Jesus, Jesus didn't set in order government before he set in order the church because the church is the governing body of, of um, nations. The church is the governing body, amen, that releases men and women into society. The church understands the principles of the ecclesia, and the ecclesia are a governing people. So basically we see then that um, these men and women knew the spirit realm. And this is why it's so important that apostles and prophets in this day understand the spirit realm because as we speak and as we decree as we set things in order a chain of government begins to manifest so um we see jesus came to set up an ecclesia then to confront the gates of hell he came to disempower them he came to collapse these gates he came to um legislate against them so Whenever the ecclesia, wherever the ecclesia went, the kingdom of God began to manifest. So think of a nation then that today, where the gates of hell are open over that nation in terms of sickness and disease. We just have to look at COVID, for example, four years ago when COVID suddenly hit the earth. I believe this was the gate of hell being released over nations to bring sickness, to bring um, disorder, to bring anarchy 
um, uh, because um, if people are poor and, and they cannot earn, obviously fear and, and widespread anarchy could be the result. But the church, I believe, at that time had an opportunity to stand up against this deadly disease and to legislate and to decree in the realm of the spirit that we are not going to allow this disease. We are not going to allow um, this particular sickness of our families. We're not. Um, I believe that um, many leaders of churches would stand up um, over their congregations and saying, I proclaim healing over you today. We are not going to um, allow our government, we are of the government of heaven, we are not going to allow the government in the natural to control us. And many individuals had to make that decision. And I know personally myself had to make that decision. Am I going to allow this disease to control me? Am I going to allow the future of our business, the future of our ministry to um, fall apart because the government is legislating and the government of South Africa is saying that we cannot work and, and we cannot um, earn and, and, you know, all that goes with employment and, and um, uh, men and women that you employ need to be paid, etc., etc. So here was an opportunity with the gates of hell manifesting in, in the place of COVID and through this deadly virus and this deadly disease, we had to, an opportunity to stand up. And I believe that this was the beginnings of God saying to the church, you can legislate, you can decree against this disease, you can lobby for better health care, you can lobby for um, uh, policies in government, amen, that will promote the kingdom of God and bring freedom to society and reformation to society. There's a wonderful example in the word in Matthew 15, 22 and 28, where Jesus confronts the Syrophoenician woman. Okay, And it says that he departed from Tyre, he departed from Siren, and here he met this woman from Canaan. And she cried out to him and said, my daughter is severely demonized, severely possessed. Please could you help me? Son of God. And so in verse 28, Jesus answers and he says to her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as your desire, as her daughter was healed from that very day and that very hour. Amen. And so Jesus saw her faith. Jesus legislated and he decreed over this girl. He didn't even need to be in the room where the girl was. But he saw in the realm of the spirit the, the possession. He saw the conflict. He saw the oppression of the enemy over this girl. And he legislated and he says to her, healing is yours. Amen. And so as we understand the principles of legislation, we must know the power of sound. We must know the power of the voice of the ecclesia. Amen. That the ecclesia carry a voice in society. That the ecclesia, as sound is released through the voice of the ecclesia, and the spirit realm changes, the atmosphere changes. And this is what the ecclesia is about. They legislate from heaven to earth to bring atmospheric changes. So the atmosphere of disease, the atmosphere of, of weakness and, and sickness around this girl changed because Jesus legislated and he said to her, according to your faith, your daughter shall be healed. Amen. So then we ask ourselves, what is the definition of legislation? Basically to make laws for the benefit of citizens of a nation. Amen. So there's personal legislation, there's personal governance. You have to govern yourself. You have to govern your own personal finances. You have to steward that which God has given you as an individual. But then we find corporate governance and we find corporate legislation. We find economic legislation, political legislation, legislation that affects um, every sector of society. So basically, the Ecclesia has the mandate, we legislate through our voices, and we make laws that regulate culture. Change the culture of an economy 
from being a culture that um, um, is a consumer type of culture to a, a, a culture that will stand for personal liberties where all can have personal and um, financial freedom. How? Through breaking the culture of debt, through breaking the culture of dependency on the government. Um, um, many economic policies need to change over nations for this day. Amen. Um, the elders um, uh, were composed and legislators were found at the city gates. Legislators today need to be found in all sectors of society. King Solomon and his domain, believe it or not, legislated and astonished all nations that were surrounding his domain, amen, his territories. He became the wealthiest king in all the earth. Why? Because he was able to steward, he was able to legislate. We see that um, culture will always change where there's um, God-given legislation, where there are God-given legislators, amen. And so legislation then today needs to be founded on God's word, where there's a principle of um, religious practice which offers sacrifice to foreign gods, where the nation is 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 offering um, sacrifice and the nation is bound um, by demonic principalities. Legislators within government need to stand up. The ecclesia within government need to stand up and legislate for a new culture, a religious culture that is founded on the word of God, amen, that a religious um, culture which manifests from heaven to earth, amen, a, a culture that will set people free to worship the living God. And we find, as I said earlier, many nations. So I trust that you have um, enjoyed this broadcast today. I trust that you'll get the principle of legislation, that you'll get the principle of the ecclesia, that you will understand that the ecclesia are governing people and that you today need to um, set law and order and legislate against the kingdom of God, starting personally, starting with your family, starting with your own economy, and then progressing as God um, releases greater authority in and through you. You must know your um, authority as a legislator today. You must know your authority as the ecclesia, that um, it's not a um, man's authority that's been given to you, it's God's authority, which he wants to manifest in and through you, to change systems, to change culture and to bring the order of the kingdom of God to manifest against and to dethrone, amen, and to dismantle the kingdom of darkness here on earth. God bless you.